Good evening. Welcome to our midweek service tonight, and we're going to continue our series of looking at very simple objects that God has given to us that He also used to prepare a place for our Lord to be born. And tonight, uh, last week, of course, we looked at stones, about as common as you can get. And tonight, our object is straw. And I thank the three or four volunteers that I had who volunteered to bring a full-size straw bale so we could have that in here. But we decided, and thank you, Renee and, and Diesel, for providing a, a little bit smaller and neater uh, straw bale for us to think about. But when we think about straw, it's a very common thing, but we thinking about something that you don't save, but throw away. Now, maybe I'm wrong here, because obviously Renee saved that one. <laughs> but that was a little different. You know, we use straw for bedding, or for banking around the building, or things like that. And straw is one of those things that goes back to nature pretty easily. But you know, we have the same thing. Uh, in our world, even though we're not on the farm anymore, we have plastic bottles that are meant to be thrown away or hopefully recycled. Or do we really throw them away? Or You know, I was thinking about this on the way over. I bet you if I asked almost every one of you, if I come to your house and said, uh, can I borrow a cool whip bowl? How many of you would have a couple of them in the cupboard? <laughs> you know, they're meant to be thrown away, but we don't. We save them. But tonight we're not going to look at that saving or recycling. We're going to just look at things that, that God has given us that are just meant to be used and thrown away. And we're going to apply that to some other gifts of God. You know, not only how Jesus was laid in the manger, in the hay, in, or straw, you know, we'll kind of use the same together. But what about us? I want you to think about, you know, we joke all the time and probably even tonight about, you know, some of us are getting a little older and, and thinking that, you know, if I had known I was going to live this long, I'd have, I'd have saved a little bit, you know. <laughs> but maybe we shouldn't. Maybe we should use ourselves up, wear ourselves out, uh, for the sake of the gospel, for the Lord, serving our God, uh, because he's, he's going to renew this body in the resurrection anyway, and so no sense uh, saving it. Uh, but that doesn't mean we want to uh, live recklessly and stupidly either, but in that service of the Lord. So that's our theme tonight, is something that can be used up uh, for whatever its purpose is. And straw will be our, our focus. We're going to follow the same type of service that we did last week. In fact, the tunes that we'll sing are all going to be the same as they were last week. It's just that the words have been adjusted a little bit to turn our thoughts away from stone to straw instead. Now this first section is kind of long, so I'm just going to have you go ahead and, and stay seated as we have our responsive hymn and Bible verses uh, together. So we'll go ahead and begin with our first stanza. <laughs> together. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can 
is the end of the years. Grass withers and flowers fade, but the word of our God will stand forever. St. Peter, verses 18 to 25 in chapter 1. Knowing that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for your sake who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, <coughs> love one another earnestly from a pure heart, since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God, for... All flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers, and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And this is the good news that was preached to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read responsibly, as indicated in your worship folder, the psalmody. How often are the wicked like straw before the wind, and like chaff that the storm carries away. But the sin has sought the Lord, from everlasting to everlasting, on those who fear him. As for us, <coughs> our life is like grass. We grow and flourish like a flower. Then the wind blows, and it is gone. No one sees it again. Do not fret because of the wicked. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong, for they will soon fade like the grass. They will die like the plants that wither. But the sin has love of the Lord is 
is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him. Grass withers and flowers fade, but the word of our God will stand forever. So teach us to number our days that we may use them wisely. We sing the stanza from Savior of the Nations come. chapter 6 verses 25 through 30 as our gospel. Please stand in respect of our Lord as we read the words of the gospel that he has given to us. And Jesus says, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, dear Christian friends. Our text is from that epistle read earlier, especially verse 24, which is actually a quotation uh, from Isaiah chapter 40. All men are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall. This is the word of the Lord. Well, kind of as we said in an opening reading, we live in a throwaway world more and more. I think most of us remember when soda pop came in a bottle and you could take it back and get a deposit or trade it for the next bunch of bottles. and. Maybe this is making a return because I noticed uh, on a little can of, a little bottle, a plastic bottle of water the other day that I think it was in uh, Oregon that, that you could get like a 20 cent deposit for it. And then I started to figure how many little plastic bottles you'd have to get in order to make a trip to Oregon and back and <laughs> it didn't quite pay. So we throw them away. People used to carry a cloth handkerchief in their back pocket, or if you were an LWML woman, in the sleeve of your sweater, <laughs> right? But now you carry a Kleenex and you just throw that away. <coughs> People used to wash baby diapers. When's the last time you saw that? Now, you know, pampers or whatever are the, the thing that is used. And think about those Swiffer people. They sell just about everything you can hang on the end of a stick and clean everything from your ceiling fans to dusting the window sills and then throw it away and you're done. Now, when preachers talk like this, they're usually being critical of a society where we are so wasteful and we're not very good stewards and we're not taking care of the, the environment. 
But we're not going to do that tonight. Tonight, as I said in the opening reading, we're going to celebrate the fact that there are some things that God allows us to use that we just use them up and then throw them away. In fact, we're even going to look at some things that you might not think about that we can use up for the Lord and then throw them away if there's anything left of it at all. So this year in our Wednesday services, we're looking at some plain things that God used to prepare Bethlehem as the place for his son, our savior, to be born. Last week, we of course looked at stones like our church is made of and like we see in the fields all over, which we use for decorations. And we saw how that manger in which Christ lay was probably a stone manger in a stone cave. And we applied that to God coming to our hearts of stone as the Bible describes them, and, and turning them into hearts that are soft and, and alive and places ready to receive and believe in Jesus as our Savior. So tonight we're going to look at straw. Plain, throwaway straw. Now, again on the way over I thought, straw might not always be so plain anymore. How many times have you driven along in a road construction site and every time there's a wetland, they got these little rolled up straw things that are controlling the erosion. And I'll bet you those things go for a pretty high dollar. So maybe straw isn't such a throwaway thing. But for most of us who don't have that sort of a market, straw is, is pretty cheap. <laughs> Now, I can't say that God exactly gave us Kleenex and Pampers, but God sure did give us straw. And since God prepared Bethlehem so that Jesus was born in a manger, there must have been straw and hay around someplace. Now, not everything that we sing about in Christmas songs is actually a fact of what happened the first time when Christ was born. But when we sing the children's song about the little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay, it probably was hay <laughs> or straw in that manger. Pretty close. The big thing about straw in the Bible, and, and as we look at it in our Advent services, is that straw is not very strong. It's not very permanent. And it's not meant to be. Straw is used for bedding for cattle because it, it is consumable, expendable, replaceable. It, it breaks up easily. It can be cleaned out easily and it turns back into soil pretty easily. I wonder, do they think that they still tell the children's nursery rhyme about the three little pigs and the big bad wolf? Isn't that the one where the piggies built their house and the wolf said, I'll huff and I'll huff and I'll blow your house down. Well, you remember the house that was made out of straw was the first one to go. That's the way straw is. It doesn't last. Straw that's used for bedding gets dirty and breaks apart. It's thrown out, replaced with new straw. When it comes to barn and animals, straw serves its purpose. And when its purpose is over, it's gone. But for a short time, hay or straw was used to cradle our Lord. And God was very purposeful in doing that. Not Jesus was not born in a king's castle, cradled with fine silk and things like that, but in a stable with straw, so that we would all know that he is for every one of us, no matter what our status is. But how many things do we have that are like that? How many things do we have that are common, that we know it's just meant to be used up? What about our money? What about our time? What about our energy? What about our love? Do we save those things? Or do we use them up? What in our lives 
can be put to use right now to prepare for the coming of our Lord this Christmas? What do we use up for God? Our text tonight says the grass withers and the flower fades. Withered grass is thrown into the fire and consumed. And that's the important word. We, at least I do, I know I shouldn't, but we kind of worry about the, the withering that's going on in our bodies. But what is consumed and used up for the Lord? Are we tempted to hang on to things that should be used? Are we tempted to collect things, treasure things, hoard things, instead of using them as God intended? This is an absolutely true story because I heard it from the, the woman who was a, a pastor's wife who was cleaning out her mother's house after her mother passed away. And while they were cleaning out the house, she found a box, and written on the outside of this box was pieces of string too short to save. <laughs> and the box was full of pieces of string too short to save that were saved. Well, one of the things that shouldn't be saved but that we save anyway, is maybe this whole season of, of Advent and Christmas. You know, don't we ever always complain about it every year that, you know, Christmas has lost its true meaning. It's all commercial. It's all gifts and presents and spending money. And so we talk about how do we keep Christ in Christmas. Well, the season can kind of become an end in itself. And not just a way to get to Christmas, but this is the big thing, all the preparation. And, and we say things like, oh, I wish Christmas would last all year. But in a way, this whole season is kind of like straw. It's a cradle for our Lord. It's a cradle for the Christ child right now. But it's just a temporary one. The season exists not, not for us and for our fond feelings and all the wonderful, beautiful decorations of the music and everything else. But it's, it's about Christ. And think about money. The money that we call ours. Are we tempted to treat it as if it was given to us to hold on to permanently? How many of you have gotten letters from organizations, and you get a lot of them this time of the year, who organizations that are setting up an endowment fund. And they want you to contribute to this endowment fund so that we can have this large sum of money and then spend the interest. Is that an example maybe of hanging on to something that should be given away? Do we trust that if God has a, a need in His church that He can't raise up another giver, that we have to have a, a big fund with interest dribbling in? I'm sure there's a good place for such things, but for the most part, I believe that God gave us money to survive, but also to, to give it back, to use it, to spend it, to consume it. Now, I can do that for myself well enough, but I bet most of us grew up in an era that even now, maybe without all the kids in the home and without all kinds of expenses, Maybe we have a little more money now than we did. But we don't spend it. We still live the same lifestyle. But the Holy Spirit teaches and enables us to, to spend ourselves, our money, our things for the Lord. And what about the love and care that we should be expending? Are we, are we tempted to keep that inside, to hoard it? as well? Or do, do we dole out our, our love and our concern grudgingly or in small doses or only to those that we consider to be close to us and deserving? Suppose that God had worked that way. If He did, of course, we wouldn't be here tonight. We wouldn't be celebrating the birth of God's Son. 
God would have stayed in heaven. But the full message of the seeding is that God loved the world so that he gave. And what God gave, his precious son, cradled of all places in a manger, asleep in the hay, he gave himself, his son, to be used up completely for our salvation sent into the world to be consumed. He gave his life in order to provide us with something more permanent than a house of straw, more permanent than this body that's compared to grass that withers and blows away. But he gives us that solid foundation on which our faith and our life can be built and gives us that eternal comfort. I, mean, I hope when we heard those words, about the grass withering and flying away, that we didn't just think about our body, the decline, the weakening, the sickness, the aging, and eventually the death, but rather that we think about the Word of God that remains forever, that Word that has declared us forgiven, that Word that declares that we're going to live again in a, in a body that never is wearing out or consuming, but a body that God will raise up and will be with him in glory forever. It kind of reminds us of one of the first times that straw is used in the Bible. I should have made this a trivia question. I could give you prizes if you get right when the first time straw is used in the Bible. But it's in the Old Testament when God's people went to Egypt as slaves. And remember, as slaves, they had to make bricks. And remember, when they got a little bit stronger, Pharaoh worried that they might get a little bit too strong and they might seek their own independence. So instead of providing them with straw, which was one of the ingredients in the brick, they had to go and get their own straw and still make the same number of bricks. But just think about it. Here, good old, simple, weak, consumable straw was made into something else because of other things that were added to it. And some of those bricks that were made even then with straw are still standing today in structures like the pyramids, for instance. Well, the straw by itself would have been gone in just a few days, but the bricks have been around for thousands and thousands of years. And the grass withers and the flower fades. That's talking about us. We're grass. We're straw. But that doesn't mean that we're unimportant. But because we do wither and fade, part of our importance is that God has put us here, like straw, to be used right now. Like pieces of string that are too small to save, we're too unimportant, too sinful to save, but God saved us anyway. Like Pharaoh's bricks, God added something to us. God added faith. God made us into something that would last. His children. God united us with Christ so that we'll not just last thousands of years like the pyramids, but eternally. And meanwhile, until that time, God uses us like straw, wears you out, uses you up. And instead of throwing you away, God saves you, renews you, recycles you, uses you again and again for a short time on earth and forever in heaven. Like straw, some gifts from God are are not given to, to keep, to hold, but to spend and to use. And you are that kind of gift. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We're going to continue in our fashion we did last week. Instead of singing the hymn before the sermon, we're going to sing now after thinking about those words about straw, and so we'll sing these stanzas of For the Lord, a place to pick.
in the mansions above. And so we pray that you would give us health and strength, not just to be saved, but to be used for you. Show us those places where we can be consumed, where we can provide comfort, where we can provide anything that you would have your people receive through us. These and whatever other things you see that we need, we pray that you would grant to us, as together we pray the prayer our Lord taught, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord, who gives us peace, make you holy in every way, and keep your whole being, spirit, soul, and body, sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls us is faithful, and he will do this. Amen. And we sing our closing stanza. December 24th, and I haven't quite figured this out yet because we decided just recently that we're going to go ahead and have our evening Christmas Eve service anyway, right? And that's going to be at 4 o'clock, right? Correct. I should look at the lady who makes the bulletin. 4 o'clock, right? Okay. <laughs> so, uh, Christmas Eve. But that's Sunday, and so Sunday morning, that's my turn to preach here, and so we'll also have our Sunday morning uh, service. And one of those will be the final emphasis, and I think that'll be on Sunday morning, where we'll uh, look at that fourth thing that God used to prepare for the coming of Christ. And then our Christmas Eve service will be a, a service of Christmas carols, and then the candlelight service to close. So that'll be our services coming up. Do any of you have any announcements that you need to make at this time? If not, we'll greet one another as we leave. Uh, you know, if I was a little overtime last week, then I, I, I give you five minutes back tonight. <laughs> and, you know, if the funeral for my aunt that I attended had been in Wadena instead of Sabika, I could have thought of one more story probably, and then we would have had this time all filled up. But we'll, we'll wait till next week, we'll greet one another.